So you would remember that um, we are doing chapter one under this section, principles of electricity. So we are here on chapter one, current flow in an electric circuit. So current flow in an electric circuit has Ohm's law, which we have already done resistivity we have already done resistivity we are now here temperature coefficient this is what we will do on this video you know me i don't do the ex the examples that um, this test book has i only go to the exercises so we will do the exercises that um, are for temperature coefficient these exercises help us know temperature coefficient calculations and master them if i would say so without wasting time let's check what formulas your formula sheet will have so we know that formula we used this formula a lot when we we're doing resistivity now we are doing temperature coefficient hopefully these are the formulas that we will be using and these formulas are they in your formula sheet you don't have to know them by heart but just keep on checking what is there on your formula sheet and what is not there so that what is not there you know it by heart and when it's your exam time you don't better so let's go let's do the first exercise so this is the question a coil sorry a copper coil has a resistance of so um, that's the resistance given we don't know whether it's r1 or r2 4 ohms or 0, 0,4 ohms and we are given the temperature uh, which is 12 degrees C and uh, what else we are told find its resistance at so now it's given that this is R1 and this is T1 because we are told to find the resistance at 25 so we have T2 our T2 is 25 degrees celsius so t2 will always be higher than t1 and r2 will always be higher than r1 so they are saying take the temperature coefficient of resistance for copper as <clears throat> so a temperature coefficient is a represented by this symbol and it's said to be 0, 0.004 so you remember the formula this is the formula so if they are saying we should calculate r2 what does that mean? This means we need to make R2 the subject of the formula and then calculate. So the formula says R1 divided by R2 is equal to 1 plus temperature coefficient times T1 all divided by 1 plus the temperature coefficient A2 uh, multiplied by T2. So if we want to make R the subject of the formula, um, this is what we do. We multiply both sides by R2 and here by R2. So R2 will cancel R2. And uh, since we want to get rid of these two, so this comes also and multiply R1 and we have something like this one plus temperature coefficient t2 equal to one 
plus temperature coefficient T1 all divided by R2. If you want to, you substitute the values here, then here you will get a number that you will divide what you get on this side, which will also be the number by this number. But if you like me, um, I like to divide both sides by this uh, 1 plus temperature coefficient T1 all divided by 1 plus temperature coefficient T1. So I now have R2 equal to R1 1 plus temperature coefficient T2 all divided by 1 plus temperature coefficient T1. So with this, I can now substitute my values. R2 is equal to um, R1 is 0, 0,04 and 1 plus 0, 0,004. They said T2 is 25 times 25. And we have 1 plus T1, they said um, the temperature coefficient is 0, 0,04 and T1 is 12. So we just punch this in the calculator that the, this resistance must be bigger than that one. If it's not, e, we are in a dilemma. Um, find the resistance at. So we're looking for R2. Let's punch this on our calculator. Um, ba -ba -bum -ba. What's making me? Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said R R two R one is zero comma zero four. Is zero comma four? Sorry, one plus zero comma zero zero four times twenty five. And then we divide. Divide by what? I must close the brackets there. Then we divide by 1 plus 0, 0,004 times 12. That is the answer that they have there. So it's 0, 0,4 2 ohms. So we are higher. Yes, there is zero year when there is nothing written. So we are higher. So I'm convinced that we are right. So we got R2. That was basic. Eh? That was basic. Simple and basic. So let's go to the second question. Uh, we'll see if we will be able to. The shunt winding of a motor. Sorry has a resistance of 80 ohms at 5 degrees Celsius. Find the resistance at 50 degrees Celsius. So this is T2. That makes that T1. And, make, and this makes this R1. If the temperature coefficient, so we are looking for R2. So this is the same thing that we would do. So we, we're just going to use the same formula that, that, that we had there, but let's write everything that we have down. Um, they told us that R1, what is R1? 80 ohms. And they told us T1 is 5 degrees C. And they told us T2 the temperature coefficient is the same as this one. T2 is 50 degrees C. This is the same thing. You just, just pause and substitute the values and see if you get the same answer. 
this will be r1 is 8 1 plus 0 comma 0 0 4 um, times um, times t2 right t2 is 50 we divide by 1 plus 0 comma 0 4 times t1 which is 5 degrees c let's punch this in a calculator and see what we get one plus zero comma zero four times 50 degrees all divided by one plus zero comma zero four times five what we get is r2 is bigger than r1 94,118 ohms but what they got here is the same almost the same they just didn't round off okay we're done we want a challenging exercise uh, are they giving us it here yeah. i don't know let's see the resistance of a coil of a wire increases from 40 ohms at 10 degrees c r1 t1 to 48 ohms r2 at 60 degrees c this one i would say it's challenging so yeah i can tell we are gonna be asked to calculate the temperature coefficient r1 is 40 ohms and t1 is 10 degrees c r2 is 48,25 ohms and t2 is 60 degrees c find the temperature coefficient so we are looking for this guy let's remember what the formula says r1 divided by r2 is equal to 1 plus the temperature coefficient at t1 divided by 1 plus the temperature coefficient multiplied by t2 so if we want to make this the subject of the formula what should we do remember maths um, this come and multiplies here and this goes and multiply there this is like multiplying here with multiplying here with this and doing the same thing on this side and multiplying here with r2 and doing the same thing on the other side but we just call it cross multiplication so r1 into 1 plus um, the temperature coefficient T2 is equal to R2, 1 plus our temperature coefficient, which is NT1. If you want to, you can substitute the values here. You will multiply a number by a number, get a number, and you will substitute a number there. That number multiplies here. So here you would, you would have um, something like, um, I'm, ju I'm just making an example, um, 2... You will end up having 2 plus this is an example and the temperature coefficient and the number or let's put 3 there so what you would have on this side also would be the same as let's say maybe 3 plus 5 um, then the temperature coefficient when this has multiplied it there so you know you see now it would be easy you will just take the number on this side or take this number on that side and take this one on this side then you would get um the answer but what i like to do i like to make this the subject the subject of the formula how am i doing that okay okay let me do 
both of these methods ne? this one is easy let me do the easy one ne? yeah let me do the easy one okay it's 41 plus um we're told that t2 is 60 degrees c so r2 is 48 comma 25 1 plus um, then t1 is 10 it, it it's better if you write times here so now here we would have 40 um, so let's punch what is 40 times 60 40 times 60 it's gonna be 2400 equal to 48 um 25 then here it's 10 48 comma 25 times 10 is equal to um plus 482,5 with our temperature temperature coefficient. So now if we take this to this side, the sign will change. Remember, minus um 482,2 sorry, comma five. Um, and if we take 40 to this side, the sign will change. So we'd say minus 40. So if we say for 200, um, 2400 minus 482,5, um, this is equal to 1917,5. And this would be eight comma two five. Uh, let's just store this to a. We will recall a. So we divide both sides by one nine one seven. Um, comma five. One nine. Comma five. So here we will have the temperature coefficient equal to. So let's say eight comma two five divided by. Let's recall a, which is this. Um, our answer is. You see um, that negative three is thousand. So this is just as it, this is just like saying four comma three divided by thousand. Four comma three divided by one thousand. That thing comes back. Let's write that four comma three. I will explain it uh, later. Minus three. That is the temperature coefficient. Um, remember, the temperature coefficient is the is the the SI unit for it is per degrees C. So that is our answer. But we don't want to leave it on this format, right? So um, this means we. We take this comma and say one, two, then if we say one, two, and then the commas, okay, we would have, for example, a zero. We don't know how many zeros, ne? let's just write um, five zeros, because we have three, let's write four. So we are here, ne? so we've got three there. That means um, we say one, two, sorry, we say we are here 
you you start calculating once you you move you can calculate while you are still still so one two three so this means our comma is here so this is the same because we have two zeros let's just write this as zero comma zero zero um four three per degrees c but me i wouldn't punish you even if you leave this answer like that so i still want to make that the subject of the formula for those who like to make things the way i i i make them so let's take that and write it here so we what we do what we do what we will do here will multiply by r2 multiply by r2 with we would do the same also here so we'd have r1 um sorry we would have r1 plus r1 temperature coefficient t2 and here would have r2 plus r2 temperature coefficient t1 so we we'll take r2 to this side or r2 to this side let's take r2 to this side ne? r r1 R on to this side so with r1 will become negative and let's take r2 let's take this to this side so this on this side would have r1 temperature coefficient t2 minus r2 temperature coefficient t1 so we want this so we take this out as the common factor temperature coefficient then we have r1 t2 when we take minus r2 t1 or equal to r2 minus r1 so the temperature coefficient then would would divide by this and we'll have r2 minus r1 all divided by r2 t2 minus r2 t1 if you would substitute the values here you'd still get that let's do that r2 we were told that r2 is 48,25 minus 40, which is R1, all divided by um, R1, which is 40, T2 is 60, minus R2, 48,25, T2, sorry, T1 is 10 degrees. So let's punch this in the calculator and see if we get the same answer. So we have this. Um, we have 48,25 minus 40 all divided by 40 times 60 minus 48,25 times 10. This is equal to what is happening now? Uh, no, something wrong here. It's there. It can't be negative. I forgot to put the comma here. Then that is the answer. The answer is the same. 0, 0, 0, 0,0043 um, we said per degree C can you see that I'm sorry I'm sorry I didn't notice that you can't see then that will be it we just substituted and then we got it. we got the same answer um let us continue we did this one let's let's come and do this one now ah this one is a star 
a coil is connected across a constant voltage supply. So we have the voltage that is two, 200 volts. The current drawn is, that is the current, 2,5A. Initially is 2,5A. The current drawn initially is 2,5A. And the temperature of the coil is, so I've got the temperature. Um, which we are told that is 16 degrees C. I can already tell by, by Ohm's law that we are given R there. We just have to say R is equal to V over I. Okay, let's continue and, and take a, another data that we are given. After the three hours, the current has fallen to. Okay, that makes this I1. And I2, we are told that I2 is 2 amps after three hours. Calculate the temperature rise of the coil. The temperature, calculate the temperature rise of the coil. The temperature coefficient of copper is so we are given the temperature coefficient is 0, 0.043 per degree C and we are given the voltage so that means to calculate R1 we take this current we divide there to calculate R2 we take this current we divide there because the voltage supply we are told that is constant, so it's not changing. Thank you for giving us R2 and R1. So R1, 200 divided by 2,5. What is 200 divided by 2,5? It is 80 ohms. Um, then what is R2? R2 is 400 divided, 200 divided by, it's 100 ohms. Okay, I, I have to pause and fix this. My, my, my stand is moving. So I don't know how long it has been moving. <clears throat> Let's continue. I think I fixed that. So we have R2, R1, the temperature coefficient, and T1. So if we are asked to calculate the, the, te the temperature rise, that means they want us to calculate um, change in temperature which will be T2 minus T1. So we have T1, that means we must calculate T2. And after calculating T2, we would be able to get the temperature change. So the formula says R1 divided by R2 is equal to 1 plus temperature coefficient T1, 1 plus temperature coefficient T2. So we are looking for this guy. Um, again, here, if you want to, you okay, let's cross multiply first. This is the same as R1, 1 plus um, T2 equal to R2, 1 plus temperature coefficient and T1. So you would substitute here, get a number, substitute here, you get a number. Then you do that method which is, sim which is simpler. You know me, I like to complicate things. So let's make T2 the subject of the formula. Um, we would make T2 the subject of the formula by dividing both sides by R1. So let's do that. 
we would have 1 plus temperature coefficient T2. So we'd have R2, 1 plus our temperature coefficient T1, all divided by R1. We would take this to that side and would divide that side by the temperature coefficient again. So this is what we would have um, T2 equal to R2. Uh, uh, what is this one that I'm thinking? Yeah, this one makes life hard if you do it this way. All divided by R1 minus 1. So if we take this and divide it there with it, so this would be like saying um, temperature coefficient is equal to, um, let's just do this. R1 um, 1 plus temperature coefficient T1 minus 1 all divided by T2. Um, this doesn't divide this one. Don't make a mistake. This is like saying this divided by T2. Sorry, we're calculating T2, not the temperature coefficient. So T2 would remain there. So if you want to, we substitute, then we will get the answer. We will definitely get the answer. So let's see. The, on the calculator, we would have on top R2. Okay, let's substitute the values. Um, R2, we are told that R2 is, or we calculated R2 and was 100 ohms. Um, divided uh, by R1, which is? 80 ohms and we would have 1 plus 0 0.0043 times T1. T1 is 16 degrees C. Then minus 1. We divide by the temperature coefficient. So <clears throat> let's punch this on our calculator. Um, we have R2 hundred divided by eight and okay, let's do this. They would open the bracket and we would say one plus for in calculator to know what we are doing. 0, 0,03, 0, 0,043 times one six. We would then close the bracket. Then we would then um, yeah, that is what I wanted to do. Then say minus one. We would then come down because all of this should be divided by 0, 0.043. Let's see if we get the answer that is written here. T2 is 78,14 degrees C. Did they get that answer? No, they didn't get this answer. Oh, oh, we are asked to calculate a change in temperature, remember? 
So we need to take this and minus um, our initial temperature. So change in temperature is equal to 78,14 minus 16. And this would give us what? Let's check here. Minus 16. This gives us 62, 1, 3, oh, 1, 4 degrees C. So what they got here is exactly this. So the rounding off is not a problem, but we got 62 degrees C. So if you like my method, you take it. If you don't like it, um, you just use the same method that we used where we are, I think we used it here you just take this method if 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 mine make things hard for you let's go to number five again let's collect data the field coil of a DC motor draws, okay, again we are given current, which is 2A, a voltage, which is 200 volts. When first switched on and the coils are at the room temperature of, so we are given temperature 20 degrees C. After the running for several hours, the field current is seen to have fallen. That makes this I2 and makes this I1. 1,8. Wow. The current falls. But yeah, when the current falls, we would get a high resistance because we'll be dividing by a smaller number. It makes sense with the supply voltage remaining constant. So again, the voltage here would be 200 volts. Um, taking the temperature coefficient as, okay, we are given the temperature coefficient is 0 0.0426 per degree C. Calculate the final temperature of the field. So here we're not asked to calculate the change in temperature. Note that this question says the final temperature. In that question, they says the temperature rise. So there is the difference between the two. Let's calculate R1, 200 divided by um, 2 is 100 ohms. And R2 would be 200 divided by 1,8. I don't know that the calculator knows that. 1,8 is 1, 1, 1, 1 ohms. So now we can calculate T2. This is what I like to do. You will forgive me. I will just take this formula and substitute the values R2 over R1. So T2 is equal to R2 um, 1 plus temperature coefficient. What was the... That was T1. T1 all divided by R1, right? All divided by R1 minus one and all divided by the temperature coefficient all divided by the temperature coefficient and substitute the values to make my life easy um, one one comma one one divided by hundred okay one plus zero comma zero zero Four to six times T one is twenty minus one all divided by zero comma zero zero. 
sorry four two six let's get the answer we go to our calculator um, then we say one 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 comma one 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 um we open the bracket we say one plus zero comma zero four two six times twenty we close the bracket um we have hundred at the bottom then we have minus one then in the bottom we have zero comma zero zero four two six so is this temperature higher than that one yes we have 48 comma three zero four degrees c is that what they got they got 48 this thing with me it doesn't matter so we got this one we got this one let's come and calculate this one Um, must we still use this paper at number six? Um, we will see. Let's take down data. Maybe we will have to use another paper. The field coil of the machine is wound with 700 tens of copper so we give in tens 700 tens of copper and of uh, copper wire of cross-sectional area of 0 0.375 millimeters squared so you remember that um, when we are given a in millimeter squared we just times by negative 10 raised to negative 6 so this is um just go and watch your resistivity if you lost here uh, we would have 7 5 times 10 minus 6 then we are on meter square meters squared now let us continue and take the with the statement the mean length per 10 is 400 millimeters so we give a mean length so length is we would convert this again to meters by multiplying by 10 raised to negative 3 if you lost go watch resistivity again and what is it that we are given again and the resistivity wow the resistivity remember the resistivity is represented by this symbol and we are told that is 16 times 10 minus 3 micro so we will write 10 minus 10 raised to minus 6 to get rid of this micro then ohm meters um this this is mixing a resistivity it has that resistivity mix or vibe determine the resistance of the coil at the temperature of so um what are we told determine the resistance of the coil so we must calculate r r is the unknown and here <clears throat> they are giving us temperature um, this temperature they are giving us here is 60 degrees okay 60 degrees c at the at a temperature of 60 degrees c if the temperature coefficient is so again then they give us the temperature coefficient as zero comma zero comma zero zero four two six um per degree c so 
r is the unknown here so we the, we need to calculate r but we must be careful here we are given the temperature which is 60 what, what, what is the statement saying here the field coil of the machine is wound with 700 tons of copper wire of cross-sectional area of the the mean length per turn is and the resistivity is determine the resistance of the coil at a temperature of so there we are given r but they given us r here like in the previous examples they give us r with voltage and current but here they give us r with resistivity length and uh, and the uh, what do you call this thing you remember this formula and area so this is how our r is given r1 is given by resistivity length all divided by area so but we need to be careful because we, we are given tens so you would remember that when we given tens we take we take tens and and into consideration we given length so per ten so our tens affect uh, affect our length because we are told that the length per ten so that means for us um to get the proper length we need to multiply it by the number of tens we need to multiply length by the number of tens so if you lost here you go back to resistivity again to calculate our r we are given resistivity as or oh, that's temperature coefficient where is our resistivity as 16 times so here we'll have 16 times 10 that would be minus 9 times by length so we said our length would be uh, multiplied by tens so this would be 700 times 400 times 10 raised to minus 3 so that's how we would get our length so we would divide here by a which is given by 0 comma 3 um, 7 5 times 10 raised to minus 6 so this would be r1 r1 let's punch this in the, in our calculator and get r1 so that we would be able to calculate r2 Ooh. this thing can be a bit hard sometimes eh? raised to minus nine times 700 times 400 times 10 raised to minus 3 0 comma 375 times 10 raised to minus 6 our r1 is 1 1 comma 9 4 7 ohms so now that we know um, r1 we can use r1 to calculate r2 okay um the only formula that we know remember is this so far but um, we also have another formula that we are not given by the formula sheet and the the book 
which says um, R1 into 1 plus temperature coefficient T2 is equal to R2. So R2 can be calculated by this formula, which you can see that um, this formula is taken on this formula but they just didn't they just replaced everything here by one why because the initial temperature was zero so if you put zero here and you multiply here by zero you will get something like this um r1 over r2 equal to 1 because that 1 remains is not affected by this is 0 all divided by 1 into t2 so if we cross multiply r2 goes there and r1 goes here so that's how that's how we get this formula because now r2 will be multiplied by this and uh, I mean R1 will be multiplied by this and R2 will just replace one there. So when you are not given um, the, the initial temperature, then you would take it as zero. And then you would have this formula. So let's calculate R2. R2 is equal to that formula, R1, 1 plus the temperature coefficient, T2. So let's substitute. R1 is one is 11,947 into 1 plus, we are given the temperature coefficient, right, as 0 0.00426 times T2 which is given as 60 degrees, uh, 60 degrees C. Sorry, we don't write that here. So if we punch this in the calculator, we should be able to get this resistance but that we were asked to calculate. Let's punch this in the calculator. Um, 11, comma 947 1 plus sorry not 10 1 plus 0 comma 0 uh, 4 2 4 2 6 times 60 degrees this is equal to exactly 15 ohms so we got that we got that now let us continue to exercise number seven. Oh, i forgot that um we we need another paper we need another paper let's take the paper underneath here um. so what is number seven telling us from number seven we are told that the coil is a resistance of 20 ohms at the temperature of um 25 degrees c find the resistance at 65 degrees c the temperature coefficient of resistance at 25 degrees c is 0 0.00385 so let's take down what we are given here uh, This is what I will do. Um, R1 
is given as 20 ohms and T1 is given as 25 degrees C. R2, we are calculating R2. T2 is given as 65 degrees C. The temperature coefficient is given as 0, 0.003858 degrees C. Now let us calculate R2. This is um, basic, um, but now notice that there is something different here. We are told that the temperature coefficient of resistance at 25 is 0, 0.0385 all these ones that we're doing the temperature coefficient was 0, 0.0 was given at 0 degrees c 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 at 0 degrees c, degrees c. so we there is a trap here it's not at 0 degrees c it is at 25 degrees C. So what do we do here? Well, on this case, we need to be careful. We're not going to use that formula that says R1 over R2, 1 plus temperature coefficient T1, 1 plus temperature coefficient T2. We're not going to use this one when, when this is at initial temperature. We'll use this formula which says R2 is equal to R1 um, 1 plus temperature coefficient and change in temperature. This is the formula that we will use. So um, if you want to prove me wrong or right just apply this formula and see what you will get i'm saying this is the formula we will use r2 let's substitute r1 is given as 20 and r01 is 1 temperature coefficient is 0, 0.0385 and our change in temperature will be 65 minus 25. Let us punch this in a calculator and see what we will get. 20, um, 1 plus 0, 0.0385 times. This is 40, right? When you subtract 25 to 65, you get 40. Then this is equal to 23. Um, 0, 0,8 ohms. So what they have here is exactly what we got there. Say... Um, you didn't believe what I said and applied that formula. Um, I think you remember that to calculate R2, we would take this and put it here. So we would have R1, which is given as 20. We open the brackets, sorry. We open the bracket, we have one plus the temperature coefficient which is 0, 0.0385 we'd multiply by um, T2 which is given as 65 you would then close the brackets then you would then divide by 1 plus 0, 0.0385 I hope you still agree with me times remember for r2 you're dividing by that t1 is given as 20 so this is what you would get 
and it's gonna be 23 comma 217 so I would say you have proven me um, wrong by avoiding this formula but I wouldn't advise you to use this formula but if you want to you can use it you can see that there is a slight change there is a little difference okay we need to continue and complete this thing this thing of an exercise huh we still have two more okay let us take the data on number eight the field coil of a motor have a resistance of so we give an r as 120 ohms and we give in the temperature which is t1 as 15 degrees c after a run at a full load the resistance increases to that's r2 135 ohms find the average temperature of the coil so here we are told to find the average temperature of the coil but are we and we don't know t2 the temperature coefficient is given as um, 0, 0,004 sorry ish. let's write it here 0, 0, bunny. 0, 0, 0, 4, 0,001 per degree C okay we need to find T2 or we need to find the change in temperature I would say um, because the question says find the average temperature of the coil um, what they are asking us to calculate here is T is is T2 yes yes then the average temperature is T2 what am I saying okay let us calculate here and we will see because I don't understand the term average temperature let me try to remember there is this formula right that we have to calculate the average temperature you need to check if you have this formula in your formula sheet and if you don't have you must know it the average temperature is calculated by t1 plus change in temperature 1 over 2 times change in temperature that's the formula to calculate the average temperature average temperature is not t2 i'm wrong when i'm saying average temperature is t2 so what do we need in order for us to know the average temperature we need to know the change in temperature once we know the the change in temperature we would be able to to calculate the average temperature i again disagree that we would be able to calculate oh yes we would be able because we are given t1 and t2 so now let us calculate the change in temperature how will we calculate it? the change in temperature we would use that formula so i'm just gonna substitute because we are running out of time r2 is 135 
equal to R1, which is 120. 1 plus uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0401 times the change in temperature. So we divide by 120. 120. This one will cancel that. So we will minus here by 1 and minus on this side by 1. So here, this will cancel this. We will then be left with um, 135 divided by 120 minus 1 will equal to 0, 0,00401 change in temperature. So we divide both sides by 0, 0,0401, 0, 0,00401. So um, this would give us, let's punch this in the calculator. Change in temperature would be one eighty five divided by one twenty minus one all divided by zero comma zero four zero one and this is equal to thirty one comma one seven two degrees C. So um, you would remember that um, this is the change in temperature, which is the same as T two minus T one. So if we want to calculate T2, we would then take T1 and add here and see what we will get. So let's calculate T2. T2 is, um, I just want to see what's happening here. It's going to be 31, then this one comes to this side and add 31172 plus, we were given T1, right, as we're given T1 is 25. Did I take that unit right? We're given T1, no, we're given T1 is 15, why did I write 25? 15 degrees C. Where am I taking 25? Because I'm here. Oh, I was looking there. Sorry. So let's add 15. So T2 is 46172. Something not right here on this statement. Now everything is right. We don't know T2. I keep on looking there as if we are given T2. That is what is confusing me. I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm tired. But I need to complete this. So we calculated T2. Well, we asked to calculate T2. Was there a need for us to calculate T2? No, there is no need for us to calculate T2. No, T2 is the unknown. What did I say here? Find the temperature of the coils. So we found the temperature. Find the average temperature of the coils. So all we want is the average temperature. That's what we want. So if we give given T1, we should have just taken 
um, T1 and substitute that to get the average temperature. There was no need for us to calculate T2, but I calculated T2 because I saw that T2 is the unknown. Okay, let us substitute there and see what we get. 15, T1 is 15, right? This line really helps. It plays the A and E. Plus 1 over 2 times, what is the average temperature? Is 31, I mean the change in temperature is 31,172. So this is equal to the average temperature is 30, 586. So forgive me for the confusion that I caused here. The statement was clear. It gave us R1 and T1. After that, we told R, R after the, the run at a full load. The resistance increases to that that's r2 find the average temperature of the coil so you need to know this formula this is the formula we use to calculate the average temperature but before that we need to calculate the change in temperature so for us to know the change in temperature i said we should use this formula and avoid this formula after getting that change in temperature, I then calculated T2, which I was not asked to calculate. I was supposed to take um, the change in temperature, substitute it there, and use T1 because T1 was given to get the average temperature. Let's continue and do the last exercise. I think I won't be ding dong on this one. I will try. <laughs> Okay, number nine is a long statement. Yo, the temperature rise of a field winding of, of a machine is to be determined by measurement of the resistance of the winding. At room temperature of 20 degrees C, the resistance of the coil is, was, okay. That is T1, 20 degrees C. And at room temperature, the resistance was R1, 152 ohms. And at the end of the heat run, the resistance was R2, uh, 178 ohms. If the temperature coefficient of the resistance of copper winding referred to 20 degrees C, was so we are given the temperature coefficient um, is 0, 0.00394 per degree C. Definitely, T2 is unknown. Once I write this, I tend to calculate it even when not asked to calculate it. If the temperature, okay, determine the temperature rise of the winding. This is what they want us to calculate. Not this. But once we get this, we can calculate that. Temperature rise is change in temperature. So we will use this formula, which says... Um, <clears throat> R2 equal to R1, yes, R2 equal to R1. So I just want to see that is this T1 or T2? You remember that this formula comes through multiplying by this thing, so that's T2. 1 plus the temperature coefficient. Oh, sorry. Change in temperature. Which is what we want. Happy. 
R2, 172. R1, 152. 1 plus 0, 0394. Change in T. So we said we divide by 152. By 152. We add minus 1. We add minus 1. Cancel, 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 cancel. We divide here by 0, 0,0394. Cancel, cancel. We divide here by 0, 0,00394. E, I want this answer. Change in T. Is the same as okay let me just write this thing in a way that would make anyone understand 152 minus 1 all divided by 0, 0,0394 when you have this calculator it seems like you have lot of so 178 one five two minus one divided by zero comma zero zero three nine four and our answer is forty three comma four one four degrees C and it's exactly what they got there. So we are done. With temperature coefficient we will then do it later when we are doing exam revision so be on the look for this exercise which is the last exercise on our chapter or on our topic We are on this chapter, remember, current flowing in electric circuit. So on this exercise, we'll be doing Kishoff's and Nathan's law. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, because um, that helps me see that um, these exercises are helping someone out. Thank you.